Online, there are all kinds of tests that you can sort that can you can turn to to sort you into a political group, whether it's libertarian, progressive, liberal, conservative, or something else. But this is a tribal mindset healthy for our society. A piece published by the Heterodox Academy it makes the argument that the political spectrum as we know it does not exist, and that people shift their beliefs to fit in with the tribe rather than picking a group based on previously held beliefs. And journalist and friend of the show, Zed Jelani, joins us now to explain a little bit more on this. Zed, it's great to see you. How are you? Uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Dig, dig into this a little bit, Zed. I know that this is something you're really passionate about, which is that, you know, in our politics right now, everybody just tries, you know, if you're red, you have pre, pre prescriptions of beliefs, blue prescriptions. But the reality is, our, you know, in the lived experience, so to speak, of many Americans is people hold all sorts of contradictory opinions all the time from different political parties. Yeah, exactly. So I think it would surprise a lot of people to know that when we think about purely sorted political or partisan tribes, we think about, okay, if you're a Democrat, you believe a certain thing on abortion, a certain thing on trade, a certain thing on taxes, so on and so forth. And Republicans also have fixed views. But the reality is most people have a mix of left-wing or right-wing views, and those views change a lot over time. Uh, often we shift, for instance, just to fit in with our tribe. Uh, we've seen that, for instance, on Russia, where I think that conservatives at one point were much more anti-Russia. I think with the Trump government coming to power, they became much more pro-Russia. Uh, they were, became much more skeptical of trade, for instance, when Trump uh, came to power. And a lot of that is just shifting with your tribe. I mean, you, you pick a tribe, and then you justify the beliefs kind of following after that. Uh, and I think, actually, this is really important because it shows that while people often have deeply held values, and that's probably a more innate and, and less, less movable things, the way they express those values in terms of actual politics, in terms of what they're trying to do with policy, uh, can is very flexible, actually. It can change quite a bit. That's that's what it seems to be when we, when we look at this. Mm -hmm. And Zed, how does that relate to maybe our current political moment about what's going on um, right now? Because it seems to be, you know, people will say, oh, you know, Democrats in particular are saying, oh, look at this support for Black Lives Matter. But, you know, that seems to be a, uh, I mean, 80-20 an 80-20 issue almost, or something, 70-30. But how does that translate into actual policy beliefs and then the way that something like this gets capitalized on, so to speak? And what are the pitfalls of thinking monolithically about how people think? Yeah, so I mean, I, this is a really interesting one in that I think a lot of the symbology around it is probably more controversial than some of the policy around it. So for instance, I think Americans overwhelmingly support reforms like, you know, asking police officers to wear body cameras, uh, like doing some different things when it comes to accountability and transparency. Uh, but that, but it doesn't really mean that they necessarily agree on every slogan, on every issue. For instance, like Colin Kaepernick, when he was taking a knee uh, with the NFL, that was highly controversial. It was kind of a 50-50 issue where half the country found it to be somewhat offensive, half of them found it to be to be very sympathetic to it. But if you started polling them on the various issues undergirding like prison reform, police reform, there's actually tons of agreement. It's just the disagreement was largely how they perceived a symbol, right, which is the American flag. Some people see it as a sacred sort of ex uh, expression of uh, American patriotism and you should be solemn and, and kind of formal around it. Others see it as kind of the ultimate protest symbol. Uh, but no matter what you felt on that kind of highly polarized issue, you can still discuss uh, the policy itself and find tons of agreement, uh, which kind of showed why his protest wasn't necessarily the most effective thing in the world because it became a debate around the symbol rather than a debate around the issues. Mm -hmm. um, but that happens again and again. I think we're, we're seeing a little bit of that with the argument over various statues and renaming things. I think many of the people who disagree about those things would, would agree on the underlying uh, points of saying we should promote you know, racial equality, we should promote reconciliation, we should treat everyone fairly. But maybe they view the symbols as differently. You know, maybe some people view them as, as facets of history or reconciliation. Others see them as facets of one ideology that was very wicked, supportive of, of, of slave enslavement or racism or other things. Uh, so oftentimes these symbols make it look like we are sharply divided or unmovable. But once we actually start talking about solving problems, which is fundamentally what governance is about, I think we, we find we find that people can move around a lot. And actually, there's a lot more agreement than we, than we expect. See, I think it's always so important to remember, especially in polarizing times, like right now, but how can you move past kind of the symbology when people are so completely divided on that? What is, have there been effective ways? Give us an example of like effective social movements that have been able to move past symbology, move on the policy and ultimately unite the country or at least push the country in a better direction. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, it's really, really important to always try to bring the conversation to, okay, 
what can we do together to to work on you know some kind of specific problem being as specific as possible it's not super useful to fight over the slogan black lives matter all lives matter so on and so forth you can have that argument going on for years uh, about symbology but it'd be really useful to talk about um okay what do good police rules of engagement look like i think a lot of people would agree on that because we actually have a lot of the same values on that um just try to move past the slogans be as specific as possible about policy uh, as specific as possible about solutions and there will still be disagreements there but it'll be clear that everyone is trying to get to the solution that and and you'll see a lot more overlap in that than you will feel about symbology because symbology is very hardwired to us and i think sometimes people two people will look at the exact same thing like a flag and see entirely different things and, and that's just not as helpful when it comes to getting to solutions yeah all right zed thanks so much for joining us really appreciate it man thank you we'll have more rising for you right after this